And welcome to another fun episode of Photoshop Party. Today is Tuesday, the what is it, 16th of August. Back from a two-week hiatus, and one week was in California. One week I was listed for jury duty. That's why we've been off for two weeks. And I didn't have to serve, thank God. So what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about some of the old stuff in Photoshop that a lot of people have forgotten about and also some of the new stuff in there, which I think we've probably talked about most everything over the last few months, but I'm going to kind of review it really quick and see what happens. So let's go ahead and share screen. Whoops, don't want to do that. Can everybody see my screen right now, my Photoshop screen? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so we're doing good. And let's go into minimize that, get that out of the way, move that down here. And let me bring in a image really quick so command o to open something let's do this and make a couple copies of it just for fun um the first thing i want to talk about is old and been around for many years but a lot of people have forgotten about it um when your image comes in most of the time your layer panel will look like this, teeny tiny layers and icons there. And if you wanna make it bigger, all you have to do is go down to, you click on the drop down menu, go down to panel options, click on panel options, and you can go to medium or you can go to large. And being that I am on the older side, I like large so I can see the little images there in the pop-up window. <clears throat> And if you click layer bounds, if you make a little thing on the top layer, it's, a, it's going to show you the entire image or just the layer. So let's do that layer bounds, click OK. And on the top layer, I'm going to make a marquee and I'm going to fill it with black. So I'm going to, hey, there we go, fill it with black. And it shows the layer bounds because I have a full layer already up there. If I go back and make it man J, what it does, it just shows the little black box. So you can see between the top layer and the second of the top layer, if we drag this over so you can see it really easily, this is the layer bounds. So only that part of the layer will show. And if you change it from layer bounds to entire document click okay then it shows that whole the whole document and i like seeing that because that, that way i know where i'm at and it's a lot easier for me um again i like to be able to see and i'm older and things do that to me so we got that set back up again Let's go ahead and get rid of those two top layers. All I have to do is click on the trash can, or you can drag it down to the trash can and say goodbye. Let's go to the text tool. This is semi new, semi old. Um, one of the things is you can have the lorem ipsum show up. So let's bring it down to where you can see it. And it fills in the whole block for you. So if I make this block bigger, it fills in the block. It shows you the type or the font that's being used at the time. So you can go up and change it and go to Arial or whatever you want to do. And if you want to change it and you want, say, a specific font, let's say I want varsity. So I hit V-A-R-S and it should but it does, it's not doing that right now. Varsity. And now it's in the varsity. 
Um, you can change it on the fly like that with the lorem ipsum. If you don't like lorem ipsum, so I'll render the font. You can go to preferences, down to type, and fill layer with fill type layers with placeholder text. Click on that. And so the next time we do a layer, it won't show you the lorem ipsum. I kind of like it because it it shows me what we got going on before I start typing so I can fix it later on. Let me re-click it. And you can also set the number of recent fonts to display. So right now it's set to 10. <clears throat> At the very top, you can have 10 fonts showing for the last ones you've used, which is really cool. It saves you, especially if you're doing them a lot. Um, Wow, my computer decides it wants to not run really fast right now. If you want to change the color of your font, in the old days, you had to select the whole font. So you did, brought up your type tool, hit Command A, go up here to your letter, your colors, pick the color, red, okay, we like it. But about two years ago, they decided as long as you're in the type tool and you have the type tool selected, you can change your color really easily. You can change your font really easily. So we can change it to slime green just by clicking on the color. We can change the font. So we'll do Arial. I've got all these weird, I got to get rid of those. Let's go Arial Italic. You can change Italic to Bold or even Bold Italic without having to select any of the letters or the whole, the whole font there. You can double click on one word if you want to change it and just make it red. Or you can do one letter at a time, select the letter and go to red. So that's going to save you time. And what I'm doing is I'm hitting the enter key on my keyboard and I have a numeric keyboard. So I just hit enter and it goes. Otherwise you have to hit the check mark, check box up at the top to lock it in. <clears throat> so we got that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that layer. Well, we'll keep it. It doesn't matter. If I go to save, and right now, preferences, I think it's under export, file handling. You can tell it, I turned off it, enable legacy, legacy save as. What happens is you hit command shift S and I wanna change it to save it as a JPEG. It won't allow me to. You can save it as a copy so I click copy. Now I can do JPEG, but it will also say it's a copy, which I don't want. What I want to be able to do is just save it as JPEG straight up. So with that, go to preferences, file handling, click on enable legacy save as. and it will no longer have the word copy, which is okay with me. Hit Command Shift S, which I always do. Go down here and I can go to JPEG and save it as JPEG. So that saves me a whole lot. With the latest update on 22, you have to go through the process of going back to en enabling the legacy save as. So cancel that. And got that done. So I'm going to hit Command W, discard the layers, don't save. We're going to go to our panel up here, which is our tool panel, toolbar. And I want to change things. So 
if you hold down on the triple dots at the bottom, let me hit cancel. You hold down on the triple dots at the bottom, it brings up edit toolbar. So we'll edit the toolbar. I've taken out a whole bunch of tools that I rarely use. Um, one of them being the pen tool. Obviously, as you guys know, I don't use the pen tool a whole lot. But if I wanted to keep the pen tool, I say, oh, okay, I'm going to use it today. I can slide it back over and have the pen tool available. Or if I change my mind, I can slide it back over to the right and get rid of the pen tool out of the toolbar. So it just has the tools in there that I want, not the ones that I don't use. Pen tools, the convert point tool, I've never used. Slice tool, for those who don't know what the slice tool is, it is used for back in the days of old, like AOL websites where you had the dial up, it would slice the image so that you can have a little of it load up on a website at a time. We don't need that anymore, so I don't use it anymore. I don't use the vertical type tool very often or the vertical type mask tool. So you just go through and figure out, okay, I like this tool. I don't like this tool and get rid of the ones you don't want. If you do want them later on down the road, you can always just click on the triple dots down at the bottom down here, go in there, pick it up, or like the type tool. You can still go in because it still has the shortcut, vertical type tool. You can hit shift T and go through the different type tools that are available. If you hold down on the ones that have a drop down next to it, you can see all these different ones available. You just hold the shift key down for the eyedropper tool, it'd be I, and you can go through all the different tools here, which are really cool. And that one doesn't have the drop down anymore because I got rid of everything. So I would hold the shift T and it would change through the T's to get the one I wanted. Does that make sense? Okay. Yes. Good. Yep. Hey, hey Michael, could, I know maybe this is kind of the same thing. Could you describe how to rearrange brushes that you use more frequently than others uh, in the B tool and those kind of tools in the tool, you need quit tools in the upper left? I can. <clears throat> um, what I do, let's bring up an image really quick. Um, Let's do this one. Okay, I just selected the brush tool. And if I want, I can put my logo down at the bottom right. There's my logo. And what I've done is I've actually saved my logo in the brushes. So I have a preset for that. And what you do is you have the little house right there. You go to the next one, which is a little brush. And that's your presets. These are all the brushes that I use on a regular basis. <clears throat> if I wanted to use a soft round brush, I just click on soft round brush. If I wanted to use um, a brush for turning eyeballs green, I have eyes green. So I'll just double click on that. Go over here. I don't know if it'll work because it's black eyes. It won't work, but. Well, what if you want to put green eyes number one in your list instead of down to seven or eight like that? Um, I think this is done alphabetically. I don't know if you can adjust these or not. Okay. Well, that's what I was wondering. On the, that could on be the preferences. Yeah. Um, you can adjust them here on your brush tools. Um, and you can see that I've got way too many brushes. I've got them organized, but way too many. And I've had it to where it started backing up my brushes. And then when it resets, it'll bring in another set. So I've got like, you can see over and over and over that it keeps doing this. When, if I don't 
turn off Photoshop at night, it will cause my computer to shut down and reboot. And then it adds in those brushes again and again and again. And I have to go in and clean them out all the time. Um, however, if you have a brush that you really love, let's say well, I got a soft round brush. I've got this green color here and it's in color mode 10%. All I have to do is go to the drop down, click on the plus or click on the little uh, wheel right here and click new tool preset. I can include the color. I can rename it to brush tool soft and we'll say green. I have it set for eyes green so I can paint the eyes green and then just click OK. And now it's going to put it in the same area. So it goes alphabetically brush tool soft green. What you could do is bring up that brush, go down to rename. Where's my rename at? I want to rename it. Why don't you have, there it is up the very top. Rename tool preset. If you want to put them in order, that'd be zero one brush green and soft, however you want to name it. And then the next one you do zero two, zero three, and you can rearrange them that way if you wanted to. Okay, thank you. Yep. Hey Mike. <clears throat> hey Michael, can do you have time to to uh, show me how you created your uh, brush for your name? So I can just drop it in all the time like you have. Yeah, we can do that. Let me finish this part and then we'll do that. Okay. So let's undo my brush on there. <clears throat> what I want to do is I want to <clears throat> paint the bird, but I don't want to go outside the lines. So really easily, what I can do is get my selection tools. We'll do a select subject which does the bird really quick. And we'll put them up command J on its own layer. Now you can see that their the legs aren't, weren't selected. I'm not worried about selection right now, but what we can do is paint this bird. So I'm gonna paint him with my green brush tool. And I wanna make sure when I brush, I'm gonna use a really big brush. I don't want to go outside the lines. And a shortcut for going from 10% opacity up the top to 100% opacity is just at zero. So I'm at zero, which is 100% opacity. And it's painting in color mode, which, okay, we can see that. Turns everything green. So I just want to paint the bird. And if I had to do it the old-fashioned way, I would go up here along the edge and really slowly have to paint. Well, there's a faster way. Where you have your settings for your layers, right below that, it says lock. What that is, is a transparency lock or lock transparent pixels. I click on that. Now I can paint my bird and not go outside the lines. No matter what I do, no matter how big my brush is, I'm staying within the lines of what was selected. Can you show me again where you, where you had that, where it says lock? Okay, see where the bird's beak is? Yes. There's the word lock right here. I'll underneath your, your settings here. Yeah. And if I unclick it, I can paint. If I click it, it stays within the lines. That's something that's been around forever and ever. And I've always forgotten that it's there. And every time I take another class, um, I mean, oh yeah, now I remember that. So hmm. that is out there and available. But if I get rid of this layer and I try to lock the background layer, it won't lock. It's already locked, but it won't let me lock transparent pixels because there's nothing transparent there. 
So let's close that. Any question on that one? Ooh. Okay. We're going to go command new, which is um, command N is new. Or you can go up to file new and you have the new document interface. I really love this thing. It's really cool because you can do all kinds of cool stuff with it. I'm going to do 10 by 8 at 300. And I'll click create. What I want to do is I'm going to make a brush. So I'm going to take my type tool and I'm going to go to my favorite for my signature is taken by Vulture's demo. So it's taken by Vulture's demo. You can get that at defont, D A F O N T dot com. It's free and it's really cool. And you get a whole bunch of other fonts there too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make fairly big, taken by vultures, and I'm going to make my font fairly large. I'm going to type in my name. And you can see that the spacing is off a little bit. I'm not liking that. It's a little far away. So what I'll do is go to my paragraphs and my characters and I'll put it at zero. I'm gonna put that at auto. That should be at 39, 100%. There we go. And I'm going to change my color from the character panel up here and just go to black. So I hit for the color. The cool thing is with the colors here, you've got a six digit hexadecimal number there, which is 79BA5C. Well, I just want black. All I have to do is hit zero in that. And it gives me black. If I hit FFF, it gives me white. If I keep going on the Fs, it'll turn some blues on until I get to six Fs. But for me, I just want zero for black. When you do a brush, make sure you're using black. And we're going to say, let's go a little bit bigger just for fun. 77. Okay, that works. And I'm going to add another font down here. And I'm going to change it from taken by vultures to... Uh, let's go with Arial. No, oh, Myriad Pro. And I have my Lorem Ipsum turned on, so I can see what the font looks like while I'm doing this. I want to turn it down a little bit. I'm going to move it up here, and I'm going to change the word to photography. Photo shog. I can type. I really can. Photo graphy. Ay, ay, ay. It's one of those days that I'm having today. M I C H A E L C O L L I N S. Okay, I spelled that correctly. Okay. I hear you, Thank Dennis. Uh, I hear I, you. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I heard that little giggle from you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I have this set up. I'm going to make this into my brush. Um, what I can also do <clears throat> is I'm going to flatten this really quick. So we just go up to the drop down menu, go to flatten. It's now flattened. I'm going to go B for brush, make it a little bit smaller, and I'm going to make my D for default so I get black and white colors. And I'm going to hit X to bring up my white color. 100%, 100%. And it's in color mode. That's why it won't do anything. Take it to normal. And we'll get rid of the dot in the eyes. And I want to make a custom shape tool. And let's go to, well, let's do a flower. And we'll put this flower. 
That's going to be my shape. And I need to change it in appearance. I need to change it from white to black. And hopefully this works. There's that flower. Hmm. There is that, that flower was white too. Okay. So we'll go back to the shape, fill it with black again. Go back there. We'll flatten the image one more time. Get rid of the properties up there. So now I've got Michael Collins photography with my flowers. This is my landscape logo. So I'm gonna hit M for marquee. Draw around it, go up to edit. Define brush preset, and we'll call it landscape logo brush. And I misspelled brush. That's the day I'm having today. Landscape logo brush, and it says 2085 or 2060, 2065 there. That is not a brush number. That's actually the size of the brush in pixels. So I click OK. And we'll fill this with white just so you can see it. Command D to deselect. And now we can paint with it. It's as soon as you save it, it's the first brush up. So now we have Michael Collins photography and you can paint it any color you want and everything's hunky dory. So Michael, now you've generated another question because that was a really good demo. If I have a graphic logo and I want to make it into a brush, would I just take that graphic and convert it to a logo or okay. to a brush rather? Let's do this. Um, let's open up Birdie again and we'll go to W, which is my object selection tool and I'm going to click on the top bird and it should if everything goes right select my top bird <laughs> should and it should do it quicker there we go my bird is selected so I'm going to hit command J and now he's on his own layer so what I want to do is I want to convert him to a black and white if you want to keep him with all the shades of gray um, we'll just make them straight black and white. So let's go ahead and go to black and white adjustment tool. And we'll just kind of tweak the colors a little bit so we can get different shades of gray going on. And then I'll flatten them. Actually, what I'll do is I just hit Command E, fill the background layer with white. So you can see my background layer is the white and my or color, and my foreground color is red. So I'll hit Command or Control Delete. I will hit Command or Control Delete, and it will beep at me, and I don't know why it's beeping at me. Fine, we'll go to edit, fill, and we'll use background color. Click OK. And now we have a bird. So there's a couple of things I can do. One, I can draw a lasso around him, and I can select that, deselect. I can use the marquee tool, and I can select him that way or I can select subject and make them a brush that way too. So let's just use the marquee tool. We'll go up to edit, define brush preset, bird, B, B1RD, bird. That was the official Air Force termination for a bird, B1RD. 
So we'll deselect. We will okay. undo. Okay. Yeah. And now you can take your brush and any color you want. Mm -hmm. And now you have a brush to do that with. Does that answer your question? I think so. I'm going to have to try it because I want to keep the original color. OK, keeping the original color. Um, yeah. I'm not sure you can do that with a brush because there's multi colors in there. Yeah. With, a, with just a regular color, one color, you can do that. OK, yeah, I have a multi color logo, so OK. Yeah, All right, that, it's worth a shot. OK. Um, you might be able to use the. Um, I've got a or Hang on one second. You might be able to use the uh, mixer brush tool. There's a way to set the colors in there and do that, uh, making this a mixer brush and doing it that way. Mm. But I think we did that two weeks ago on the show and talked about how to do that. I think there's a way of doing that with a clone stamp tool. I'm not sure. I haven't tried that. That might work. <clears throat> Interesting ideas, gentlemen. There's always a way to do something in Photoshop. Normally 10, 10 ways to do everything, but anyway. So, Command W, which is close. Shortcut is Command or Control W, and then hit D for don't save. And it's gone. So we're back there. Um, yes. Uh, I had to reload um, Photoshop when I got a new computer. And now when my image loads onto the interface there, it moves all over. How do you lock it in there so it doesn't move so much? It shouldn't move if it's full size. Um, let's open Neural Filter. Colorize, that's next. So we'll do this. Open, okay. Open. There we go. If I hit the V for move, it should not move at all. If I, if I try to move using the hand tool, it shouldn't move. If it's bigger than life, so I'll go command plus the man, the hand tool will move it around. It won't move as a background because with the move tool, because it's uh, full size and I'd have, if I hit convert to normal layer, it will unlock it over here and then I can move it. So let's convert and then I can move it around inside of that. How do you default it to normal size then? Cause mine just, moves all over and I'll down I'll like make a small copy and it'll be up in the left hand corner and I have to drag it down to the center to work on and oh god oh, um <laughs> I had that problem three or four um updates ago and I just hit command zero and it brought it up to full screen for me and centered it uh -huh. then they finally fixed it I was having that problem too. Yeah, I'm in the middle of that problem. Okay. You might you might uninstall, reinstall it again. Oh joy. And that, uh, yeah, make sure if you do that that you save all your presets and right. all that stuff. Okay, thank you. You bet. I've had that issue, so I understand. <laughs> um, one of the cool things in the newer version of Photoshop, this is a new thing. We have a filter called Neuro Filters. It's up at the top. And you can see I've got it highlighted right now. Click on Neuro Filters, go down Filter, three down to Neuro Filter. And we'll go to Colorize, which is right here. And I'll turn on Colorize. Sometimes if you don't click on the little button there, you click on the word Colorize, and nothing happens. You got to click on the button to turn it on, which I found out. 
And unfortunately, mm. no matter what you do, this picture does not get any bigger. I've tried. That's as big as it gets. So with colorize, if I tried to do this in camera raw, it's not going to do diddly squat. But here, you can see it actually did fairly good getting the skin back to almost good color. You can desaturate. You can bring up the cyans or bring down the cyans and the reds. Um, and change the colors this way if you want. You okay, Sandra? Yeah. Excuse me. Okay. Um, you can also, if you don't like what it's doing, like that's giving me some god awful ugly color, just double click on the little ball right there where my cursor is and it takes it back to zero. It resets it to zero. So you can bring up the strength. Profile strength's not gonna do anything good. So let's do retro high contrast. Bring up the strength, give it a second to, to work. You can see at the bottom down here, it's telling me processing on device. And that's retro high contrast, really big. Take it back down to zero. And take it to none. But you can change the colors on here with the profile right there. So retro faded. Some of these you're just going to play with and enjoy. And that's kind of a weird tone to it. So I don't like what it did to that. So I'll just hit cancel and go out. Um, this is when you have an image. I tried to adjust this in camera raw and it would not adjust the red out enough. So let's go back to a black and white. This is really where it comes in handy. Filter, narrow filters. We'll go to colorize, click on the little switch, turn it on. And you can see that it did a fairly good job of turning the colors into something usable. I'm sure there are people using this for print competition for doing the retouching on artist category, um, whatever. I don't think they should, but they do. And then you can, if you feel like it, you can go into edit down to sky replacement. Click OK, and now you have a clean, a new sky up there. And it goes around the trees, covers them up so it looks like it belongs there. <clears throat> and that's another new thing in Photoshop is the sky replacement. But we're just talking about neural filters right now. So we'll move on from there. Mike, <laughs> one question for you. One answer for you. In the picture of the little boy, uh -huh. uh, his right sleeve was not completely colorized. How do you uh, fix that? You talk to your computer and ask it very nicely to colorize it. So that's what we'll do right now. We'll go into filter, neural filter, colorize. I didn't even notice I wasn't paying attention. So it's not bad this time, but like right down here, what we could do is click on the area here. We want to get it to that bluish color and you can't color pick out of here. And it will just click okay. And it actually did most of his jacket.
And you can his drop cap, the strength part down. Of his cap is also not colorized. Okay, well, let's fix that too. So right up here. Yep. Now this is where the challenge comes in, trying to find that right orangish brown. So we'll click on this cap, and this is where I'd love to have this get bigger. So when you click, let's go ahead and go here, get down into the reddish orange. So there's no real brush. You just have to recolorize you using just, the neutral fill. You could, yeah, for, for this way of doing it, yes. Um, let's take this one off. So we'll take the brown off. Oops, I took the blue off. I'm gonna click on the, the red one again, click remove. So it's gone. So I'll click okay and it puts it up on its own layer. What I'll do is I'll do a command J to make a new layer out of this or copy of the layer, change it from normal to color. Here I can zoom in on the hat, get B for brush. And I've got the bird brush. I want a soft round brush. Now I have a soft round brush and we will go to my color picker. If I have a brush selected or I'm in the brush tool, all I have to do is hit the option. And if I hit option, it will allow me to sample the color. And I put this layer into color mode. So what I'll do is make a smaller brush. Let's go into, change that to normal. Let's do about 50% opacity. I paint the rest of his hat in. The ear looks like some of the hat color from before got taken over. So we'll just sample the bottom portion of the ear, smaller brush, paint in the color that I want. Um, you can see along the collar right here, it didn't turn it blue. So we just, we're in color mode on the layer, 50% and just paint it in. So where it didn't work, you can use that to fix it. The dog has some blue left over from the paint. So we'll just take that color, take out the blue and make it the the tan color that it is. And other than that, it looks like it's not bad. Does that answer your questions? Uh, I'm gonna suggest something else that I did just <laughs> fooling around trying to figure it out. I tried using the clone stamp tool with the mode set to color. Okay. And that you know, so then I took a part of the jacket and painted it on to the area that wasn't quite the right color. And it did a pretty good job. Okay. That would uh, probably do it as well. I definitely, I've used the color mode. You can also do on your brush, go into color mode as well and paint with color that you want. We'll just sample the blue up here, make my brush a little bigger, and paint with some more blue. So that works really well as well. So if it doesn't fill in everything you want, you can go into color mode. And you'll notice when I saved it, go to filter, neural filters. I have it output down at the bottom next to OK and cancel. I have it selected to new layer. That way, when it comes up on the new layer, I can do anything I want to it on top of it. So, and if you want, you can do new layer mask where it just does the colors that it changed. You can do a new document, smart filter, anything you want to do. So that's how that one works. 
And that's in the new stuff. Um, so one more new thing, and we'll save the rest for next week. Let's go to the content aware fill. Let's try that one. I think we showed this a couple times already, but I'll show you again because this is really cool. Um, let's go and make a new layer of it. One of the old things that nobody knows about is camera raw filter, and I'll show you that. So I'll hit camera raw filter really quick. You'll notice over here that I have what's called the nasty sensor spot. So I'll click on the Band-Aid in the upper right-hand corner. It's called Spot Removal. And turn on Visualize Spots by clicking the box. And you can see that it makes a spot show up a whole lot better. A fly. A fly. A fly fly. So that takes care of the, the sensor spots and the flies. We got rid of them. So we'll go back to, oh, there's one more there. Cool. And if you want it bigger, you can just drag it around, figure out where you want to go with it. Or you can just make the brush bigger by just like you normally do. On the right or left bracket key, click, gone. Clicks OK. Now, now that I shot this out in, in the wild in South Africa, I want to get rid of the fence here. So what I'm going to do is hit L for lasso tool. Lasso the fence. I have a keyboard shortcut F3, which is content aware fill. And it's going to do a crappy job, probably. Let's see what it does. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. And we're waiting. Ah, it didn't do too bad of a job, except it added another lion right here. So that's not what we want. Let's try edit content aware fill. This is really cool you can tell it what you want it to fill with and then it will fill in the picture over here for you so let's go ahead and make him a little bit come on there we go a little bit smaller over there i don't want the lion as my sample because we don't need to copy him And probably what I should have done is soften the edge along here, but it got it fairly well. Let's take that out, just see what it does. You can see in the bottom right that it says spinning, spinning, we're thinking. <coughs> and my computer does not wish to think right now. Can anybody see that nice circle of death flying around in front of him? Zero. Okay. So apparently my computer doesn't want to play right now, so we'll take that out. Just try to make it work. There we go, a little better. And then click OK. Give it a second and the magic will happen. And it's not perfect, but what you can do is do some work along here, or actually you can just spend some time with it in Content Aware Fill and take that out. But it took out most of the fence fairly cleanly. Uh, Michael, on uh, the Content Aware Fill, 
I'm uh -huh. actually, I made a copy of my background um, because I thought maybe it just won't happen on background, but my content aware fill is grayed out. Really? Yes. Okay. Um, on your copy of the background, it's grayed out? Yeah, and the background too. I tried both. Let me undo that. So I have background right now. Go to edit. And it's. Oh, uh, the reason why is you probably don't have a selection. You have to select what you want, oh, what you want okay, to fill. Okay. So I will take that out and then I can go to content aware fill. There you it got it. OK, you got to have a selection before you can do content aware fill. There we go. That looks a whole lot better just doing that. OK. You don't have to create a mask for that, though, right, Michael? Or no, you, you just make a selection and go to edit content aware fill and it does all the work for you. OK. Do you select? You'd never know I had a fence up there, except for this area right here, which is too sharp. So we'll just soften it down, hopefully. There we go. Can you inverse that selection? Yeah. So let's say I wanted to select the lion. Have my selection around the lion. All you have to do is Command Shift or Control Shift I. And now everything but the lion is selected. Got it. I don't know what content aware fill will do with that, but we'll find out. Whoops. Escape. Edit. Content aware fill. Never hurts to try and play with it, see what it does. That's not going to do anything. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Okay. That's pretty cool. And I'm waiting and waiting and waiting. You have to be patient with your computer. You have to talk nice to it too. And I haven't been talking nice to my computer. I've been cussing at it today. I still got this spinning wheel going on, so. It may not want to play for a while because it's a big file, a uh, full-size file. <clears throat> Any other questions while we're waiting and waiting and waiting? There we go. It's amazing what weird things you can do with Photoshop. OK, any other questions? Going once. I don't know. Going twice. He was in there with Grace. What's that, Mike? OK. Sorry, Mike. Sorry, Mike. All right. Michael, I have a question back on the color picker. OK. Can I go to that? Uh, when I go to my color picker, it doesn't give me that bar on the right-hand side with all the different colors. It only gives me a, a selection of just a couple of colors. And I have to go to um, a whole different color picker to see that bar you've got. It goes from red, purple, blue, green. Uh -huh. I know it comes up with a, a real short amount. And I have to go to a different thing. It's like um, a painter's um, palette to get all my colors to show up. And I'm wondering if there's some setting that I've. Um, it could be the setting that you have. Mine is set the book is pantone solid coated that's the one that i have set right now so when i do that be for brush let's go ahead and open it it should be like that as your default um there may also be a setting under preferences but i'm not sure i'd have to research that one where yeah, I'm wondering where the. Uh... I don't know where it would be to start with. 
Um, okay, maybe there's something under general. We've hey, let me try. General? Hang on, let me try this real quick. Okay. Nope, not it. Under general, there's a thing there where you can on mine it says I can pick Adobe. Yeah, you've got Adobe. Well, go back up. Hang on, I'm sitting back where I started. I didn't want okay. to screw it up. So you got Adobe and you've got the huge strip <coughs> small. I've got the a different thing for the color picker. Okay. Uh, what is yours set at? Mine is um let's see, preferences general. Mine's set at hue wheel large. Okay, set it to hue strip small. Okay, set mine to medium, see that. what it does. nothing Six. it still doesn't give me the the full range it just gives me kind of um i don't know let me try this again okay let's see if i start with black and white let's start with the default colors yeah it just gives me like a couple of colors in the color color bar instead of the full range or in that right hand bar hmm let me research it see what i can come up with um yeah i, I mean it used to once upon a time and i don't know when that went away but it just drives me crazy hmm. i don't know i don't know the answer to that one i i go and i, I there's this little palette thing it's called just color and that gives me the full range color bar but that doesn't come up automatically. I have to go select it. It doesn't come up when I just go to my color picker, my eyedropper. Yeah, it should. When you go to your color picker, do that. And then your eyedropper will pick up the actually, colors. Actually, with my eyedropper, it, it will come to think of it. But it doesn't do it when I pick the color first and then pick the eyedropper. It's really weird. I just, hmm. Oh, well. Okay. Okay. I have a question. I have an answer. Okay, um, if you put some brushes in your brush presets, so let's say you have the soft round in there um, and you wanna increase the hardness just a little bit. Okay. Um, will it stay at the hardness that you select, you know, like, or does it automatic, does it just stay at the softest round? Okay, let's go to brush and I'm gonna go to soft round. I'm going to right click and right now it's set to zero hardness. So it's softest right. brush you can get. Right. We'll set it to 85% hardness Okay. and then make it bigger. Yeah. So that's, let's make it hundred percent so you can see it. So unless you change it right now, it's going to stay that way until you change your brush or change your settings. In your if, presets, it'll always it'll stay in the like preset, that. In the preset, it's always going to come back soft round. Oh, oh, that's what I wanted it to do. Yeah. Yeah, it would always your preset. Oh, it's my soft green. Okay, it is soft round and green right now is that preset. So. Yeah, I haven't taken advantage of that. I think I'll put some brushes over there. Yeah, definitely. If you use certain brushes all the time, um, these are brushes that I use all the time. I've got magic dust so that I save colors on so I can have my fairy oh, dust cool. coming out of the, the lion. I guess we should have, there we go. <laughs> he's farting sunshine. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a happy camper. So there we go. That covers a whole week's worth of stuff in an hour. And then next week we'll go to part two and maybe part three the following week. I don't know. It depends how fast we go through all this stuff. Photoshop CC includes color themes. Okay. So you go to window extensions, color themes. I need to look at that, Dennis. Thank you for the info. Any other questions? Going once, going twice. Okay, I'll turn off the recording so you can ask all the questions you want.